What's going on guys, Gaston right here. Today we're gonna to be talking about the smallest lens that I ever owned. Take a look at this little guy right over here. This one is the Brightening Star X-Slim 28 millimeters f2.8. Now, if you saw this lens, this lens is not much bigger than a sensor cap. And how come something so small be any good? So in this video, we are gonna be talking about the things that I like about this lens, some of the things that I don't like, and also we're gonna be reviewing a few images rendered by this little guy right over here. And at the end, we're gonna determine if this lens is worth your heart and money. So let's go. And welcome back to the channel, guys. And before I continue, I do have to mention that Brightening Star did send this lens to me for the purpose of this review. However, they don't have a saying in the outcome of this video, nor they get to see the video before you guys do. Now, with that out of the way, let's talk about the price of the XLM 28mm f2.8. And at the moment of the making of this video, you can get this lens for around $358 on Amazon. Now, once again, let that sink in. For $358, you get a 28mm f2.8. Now, the other comparable option that I may think of, which is another lens that I used to own, will be the TT Artisan 28mm f5.6. And I gotta tell you that I was not that happy with the image quality of the lens. The lens is a lot heavier and it is also an f5.6 versus the f2.8. Now, the TT Artisan goes for $327 as of right now. So this one, yes, is a couple of dollars more expensive, but in my opinion, it's a lot lighter, it's a lot smaller and faster as well. So what you should expect when you receive your own copy of your Brightening Star X-Slim 28 millimeters? Well, let's take a look. Now, this lens comes in this tiny box, Manila color, says Brightening Star right there, X-Slim M, referring to the mount that I bought it for, for my Leica M11, 20 millimeter F2.8. Now, if you shoot Fuji or other brand, check with Brightening Star, because they make this lens in several mounts. Now, the unboxing experience is also really nice. You are gonna find the manual, something that I never read, of course. Then you're gonna find this little pillow that protects the lens from the top. And at the end, we are gonna see this little pouch where the lens is gonna come inside. So really nice presentation. Also, the bottom of the box has a padded pillow. And to be honest with you, this unboxing experience is way better than most of the more expensive Sony lenses that I ever purchased in the past. Now let's talk about some of the features of this lens because the moment you retrieve this lens from the pouch, you are gonna realize how small it is to the point that the rear mount cap is a lot bigger than the lens itself. Now, let me remove the mount cap like so, and you're gonna realize that the utmost bulk of the lens actually overhangs off the mount. Now, I've seen this design in some of my other Leica lenses, for example, the Somilux 35mm f1.4 has a similar design where there's a lot lens protruding off the mount, but the lens is also a lot bigger from the front. So this is the first time where I see that type of imbalance where a lens is actually bigger towards the mount than it is towards the front, but I think that Brightening Star has chosen that type of design just to keep the lens as small as possible. All right, and let's talk about some of the controls around the lens, and the first one is gonna be the focusing ring or focusing tab. And as you can see, it has this little protrusion sticking out. That's gonna be the only thing that you're gonna rely to pull focus. You cannot grab the lens from the rim, so this is the only way. Now, at the beginning, it's gonna be a little bit cumbersome, but I think after, you know, 50 minutes with the lens, I got pretty familiar with this little tab. Now, the other thing that we have to highlight is that this lens has a minimum focusing distance of 2.3 feet, all the way to infinity. Pretty good. And let's actually address the aperture ring, and this one is going to be the first negative, at least it was the first negative for the first week using the lens, and it is the fact that the aperture ring is almost invisible. Now, take a look at that neural thing around the front element. That is going to be your aperture ring, and it only protrudes about maybe 1.5 millimeters, so see where I'm going with this. It is really hard to locate this, and I found myself during that first week shooting with the lens, having to look down, making sure that I'm putting my fingers in the right spot and not bumping the focus, for example. Now, the second negative that I saw for that first week was that this aperture ring doesn't have any clicking across the aperture range. And it goes from f2.8 all the way to f16, so you are gonna have to look down and make sure that you set the proper aperture. Now, the best way to use this lens is gonna be zone focusing. You know, set it and forget it and try not to pull focus with this lens. Although, you know, I tried pulling focus and after a week or so when, you know, my muscle memory was settled, you know, I had no longer problems, but I kept on bumping that aperture, you know, multiple times during that first week. 
And let's talk about the information that is displayed on the lens itself. And to be honest with you, it's a high accomplishment how they were able to cram so much information. So we do have the distance scales, as you can see. We also have the aperture range as well imprinted in there. And they even went by adding additional information around the front element. This lens is crammed, guys, but pretty impressive. Now let's talk about the optical formula of this lens. I'm not gonna pretend that I know what I'm talking about, guys. So here's a picture of the pamphlet that came with the lens of the optical formula. If this means something to you, there you have it. I'm more of a like the image quality or don't type of guy. Now, even though this lens is actually small, when it comes to weight, you are gonna realize that there is some heft in here, especially because the lens is actually super small. It's gonna be at around 112 grams. And the other thing that is pretty impressive is the lens cap design. They could have given us a cheap plastic cap, but no, they actually gave us a metallic screw in cap. And I really like this implementation because it does protect the lens when you have it in your bag, refraining from that cap popping and potentially scratching your front element. So let's talk about image quality coming out of this lens. And if you're looking for G Master Lite type of performance, this lens is not going to be the one for you because I would actually put this lens in the category of vintage with tons and tons of character. And we're talking about when lenses have some optical flaws where those optical flaws are gonna have an artistic appeal in the overall rendition of the image. And when you take a look at the center of the image, you are gonna notice that the lens is actually pretty sharp in the center. And also another thing that caught me by surprise is that we have very little barrel distortion you know, in the overall image. So I was expecting more fisheye look, you know, talking about that this lens is actually really small and $350, but Brighton Star X Slim 28 actually controls that pretty, pretty well. Now, where you're gonna start seeing those aberration happening is as we transition toward the edges. The number one thing that you're gonna notice is that focus actually follows very rapidly towards the edges and it destroys the image. You're gonna see some smearing, you know, swirliness around the image. And the other thing that you notice is heavy vignetting, whether you're at f2.8, also at f16. I don't believe it actually goes away at f16. But again, you know, it adds to the character of the lens. Now, the other thing that you're gonna notice from this lens is as a result of that vignetting, you're also gonna get a shifting in color. So towards the edges, you're gonna see some of the little greenish hue. And again, you know, if you don't want that, you can always crop this image as, you know, 60 megapixel. But to be honest with you, I'm actually a sucker for vintage look and character. So I'm actually glad with those aberrations, you know, like I mentioned before. And it reminds me a lot like shooting with film. Specifically, if I actually zoom in in this foliage, you know, the way that this lens renders foliage is very reminiscent of film. Now, the other thing that I want to mention about this lens is hazing and flaring. This lens actually controls hazing and flaring pretty good. Now, you are going to get hazing and it's going to happen between the f2.6 uh, to f5.6. It's not going to be heavy, though. And when it comes to flaring, this lens is going to be kind of like pretty hard to make a flare. I mean, it is not impossible, but it's actually pretty hard. So take a look at these images. I'm actually shooting straight into the sun. You know, I don't see any flaring and I managed to make it flare in a couple of times, but I really have to try really hard. Now, the other thing is sun stars. This lens is not going to be a sun star, you know, performer. You know, you can get some sun star, but it's also really hard to get the sun stars really well defined. And you can see right over here a couple of attempts, you know, at F16 trying to get some sun stars. And again, couldn't. Now let's talk about contrast. And this lens is going to have, in my opinion, kind of like a medium uh, contrast, not too contrasty and neither super flat. And for example, when I shot with the TT Artisan 20 millimeter F5.6, one of the reasons why I got rid of that lens is because it was super flat. You know, it, it, it lacked of a lot of contrast and I just didn't like that lens. Now this one, you know, sits right in the middle. Now, another thing that I wanted to mention is the handling of this lens. You gotta be really, really careful because there's not a lot of surface to leverage and hold this lens. And it is probably around this rim where you have maybe at the most four millimeters. You see that knurling right over there. So I almost dropped this lens a couple of times. And as a result of that, when I'm popping this lens, you know, I make sure that I have my sling bag open and I am popping the lens inside the bag. So in the event that that falls, it falls in my bag. So you gotta be careful. And I would like to share additional images while we talk about who is this lens for. And in my opinion, I think that Brightening Star made it very clear. This is a lens aimed to street photographers. Number one, we're talking about a 28 millimeter, you know, a very sought after focal length for street photographer. 
but also because they actually managed to make the lens disappear from the camera. I think that it goes more with the fact that this lens is very well suited for street photographer. Like I mentioned at the beginning, a lot of people are gonna think that you forgot to attach a lens and when now spooking people at the street, I think that is A+. plus. Also, this lens is gonna deliver instant mood in your images. Take a look at these images right now, you know, and I've done like very little grading in these images. You kinda like get instant mood with this image. For what I mentioned before, it has tons of characters and some of those aberrations add to the look that you can actually get from this lens. And let's get down to the chase, the most important question. Would I recommend this lens to anyone? And the answer is going to be yes. I would recommend this lens, but I gotta admit that at the very beginning, when I first heard of this lens and saw the size of the lens, the price of $358, I did not have any faith in this lens and I decided to pass on the lens altogether. But a couple of months later, Brightening Star happens to reach out to me asking me if I wanna review this lens and I said, hell yeah, I wanna review this lens. And I'm so glad I did because this lens really surprised me. It is, in my opinion, a engineer marvel. You know, what they were able to accomplish in this small foam factor still blows my mind every time I pop it in my camera. So I continue to shoot with this lens, you know, because it is super small when I don't want to lug a lot of weight and I want to walk around with my Leica M11. This is the lens that I have most of the time now. So I gotta say that if you're also looking for a lens with that instant mood and the vintage look, you know, this lens is gonna deliver just that. And this one is gonna be the end of the video, so if you have any further questions regarding the Brightening Star XLM 20mm f2.8, drop in down below, as well as sharing some of your experience if you have shot with a lens. I'm also gonna be listing some links so you can check the lens for yourself, and until then, I'll see you in the next video.